Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And uh, today we're going to be talking about death and grief. As usual, we're going to do a meditation. Um, we're probably going to do a 15 minutes to 20 minute meditation. And then after that, we'll talk about the topic of the day. If you have any questions, you're welcome to write them on the chat box and um, I'll check them out. Or wave at me and I will unmute you and then we can talk about it. Those of you who are the first time with me, um, we have to mute everybody because devices make funny noises and it disturbs everyone else. So. Um, that's how it is with this system. Now let's just do a simple meditation as always. As I mentioned before, meditation should be something, it should be an effortless, um, sorry I was looking down down here under, under the table for my heater so I just turned it off, it was getting a little bit too hot. Um, Meditation should be, it's not something that you do. You shouldn't be forcing meditation. It should happen naturally. So best thing is to create the environment for it. So what we're going to do is simply we're going to take our attention from the other world towards the inner world. And one of the easiest ways what you can do when you're meditating is to bring your attention to the source of your thoughts. Where do they come from? And trace your thoughts all the way to the source. And if you do it correctly, your mind will go into silence. So go ahead, relax, take a deep breath, and sink within yourself. And just allow for the meditation to come without forcing anything. Allow it to take over. Just be available to it. That's all you have to do. Relax, close your eyes, and be available. simply allow yourself without forcing anything to dive into a deep relaxed state deep meditative state
just simply be available. Allow meditation to take place, to come to you. Don't force anything. Bring your attention on the observer, the one who is aware and observing, the witness, the one who's witnessing, not what's being witnessed.
slowly, slowly come back. A friend of mine uh, asked me if I would be talking about um, death and grieving and this is something that we all have experienced. We all have lost people who we are close to and we love and have experienced. Uh, grief. The interesting part to me is that death is a very natural phenomena and um, we see it in the nature as the seasons change. Um, but somehow in our training and upbringing in the society we view death as a bad thing and in a lot of different cultures uh, we wear black, we mourn when we lose somebody and I feel like we were not educated when it comes to dying. Number one, what happens after you die? and uh, and what makes us think that it's a bad thing and and it, there is this general idea that uh, first of all most people don't want to talk about it when you bring it up they change the subject they get very uncomfortable um, especially um, I've noticed a little bit with, sort of with older people that they're around, I'm around them, they want to avoid the subject and um, act like as if this is not going to happen. Uh, I can, I saw it with my own, I see it with my own family and um, basically the general mentality is that it's not being embraced and which I believe if we educate ourselves and it's it's a conditioning basically that death is a very bad thing or death is the end and as if you're gonna go into this void and you're you're not here anymore or you're not functioning anymore, there's no awareness anymore and you disappear forever, something like that or something bad, very bad is going to happen to you. Well, I don't know of anybody who died and came back six months after. Somebody died, they buried them and then six months after they came back and tell me what is going on on the other side. We have met people who had near-death experiences and a lot of people say that they went through a tunnel of light but uh, and somehow they came back but we don't know of anybody who died and got buried and came back a year after so we don't know what's going on on the other side and however watching, observing the cycle of life, everything has a cycle and you can easily see it especially right now that we're approaching autumn and slowly you can see the leaves are turning color, they're going from green to yellow and red and uh, the weather starts to change uh, Slowly, slowly the weather starts getting colder, everything is going in 
inwards and uh, there's a shift happening. And, and then so from autumn it goes to winter and it's completely shut down and it's all internal and then it comes to spring and everything starts opening up. So if anyone's done any kind of farming, they're very familiar with the cycle of the seasons. And, and there is a process of birth and death, which is absolutely in this dimension is a necessity. So why is it we're so afraid of dying? What, what is it that we feel entitled that maybe we should be living forever? I mean, I don't want to be living forever. If they come and grant me another 100 or 200 years, I don't think if I want to do it. Um, especially as the body gets older and starts malfunctioning and there's all kinds of health issues. And you're not flexible anymore. You can't do the things you wanted to do. So... I, I don't think I want to do that. I mean, even if I make it to 100, I feel like that's enough for me. So part of me is, feels like, okay, I want to move on. I want to go on and see what's going on next, what's out there. And if I would be going to a different dimension or we'll go to another planet or whatever is the story, I'm very open to it. In a way, it kind of feels like um, you're traveling through different countries. Uh, you catch a flight, you go to Paris, you're in Paris. From Paris, you go to uh, Morocco. Um, from there, maybe you go to Tahiti. And from there, you may go to Amsterdam. I don't know. You're just going from one place to another. So it's exciting to uh, explore different places, different cultures, different looks, different people, different food, uh, weather, um, all of it. And that's how I view death. Uh, I, find, I find it exciting. The last time I had a near-death experience, um, honestly, I mean, you know, it may weird out some people because I can never tell this to my family. They would not understand it. But uh, I very strongly felt that the life force was leaving my body. And I called a lot of my friends. So they came over visiting me. Uh, I had a closet f full of interesting clothing and uh, any friend who came to visit me I, to I didn't tell him I'm dying I just told him look go into my closet and pick up anything you like whether you want a jacket or pants or shirt or anything and they were wondering why I was doing it but I very much believe that that was my last night and uh, that evening that afternoon evening was the last evening I was going to have. And uh, after different friends came and visited me and left, I uh, was hanging out in my bedroom, lying down on the bed, and there was this very deep silence with a sort of a, it wasn't a golden light, but it was some kind of light. It, I can, the only way I can explain it, I can say it was a golden light, but it wasn't really gold, but it was something in between, bright and gold, started to appear and fill up the room. But the silence that took over, this really deep uh, stillness of quiet and inner peace, and uh, maybe I can say love or acceptance, began to fill up the room and I can't explain how beautiful it was. I can't explain how amazing it was. And I'm just hanging out there and I'm just feeling this. 
and it was like, oh my god, I dig this. I'm ready for this. This is amazing. I want this. And anyway, I fa finally fall asleep, and the next morning when I wake up, there was some beautiful sunshine, sun rays coming in. I had this very, uh, I had a mosquito net type. It was a orange mosquito net that I had brought from Bali, and I had it kind of spread on the top of the ceiling. And the light was hitting this orange mosquito net, and it was spreading all over. So I wake up. Obviously, I realize I'm not dead, and uh, I was a bit bummed out. I was bummed out, and a part of me was happy that I was alive, but it it was like I I want this because it was kind of like the beloved appeared, and uh, you're excited, you're joining. You're beloved, you're excited that you're going to be hugging your beloved, you're going to be making love to your beloved, and uh, now it's not there anymore. So, I don't think and don't feel death is a bad thing. I'm open to it, and whenever it wants to come, I, I'm ready to go for it. It's a transition. It's a journey. In my opinion, obviously I haven't been on the other side and come back a year after to tell you what's going on. We have heard stories, uh, especially in early stages of my life, being exposed to some religious talks and talking about heaven and hell and blah 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 and then later on as I uh, matured I realized those are just stories and and uh, I, n I couldn't buy into the whole story of heaven and hell um, I mean when I hear about heaven to me it's boring um, I don't think I want to be somewhere that it's all Da, da, la, 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 and I think you get bored after a hundred years or something if you're in heaven. That kind of heaven they're talking about. I think it's not exciting. It's very boring with a lot of other people who are very holy. So I'm not into that. And the heaven they're ta the hell they're talking about, that doesn't make sense to me either. That you're going to be in this place, that you're, go you're in the fire. And, and you're suffering all the time. No, uh, uh, uh. I think the hell they talk about is here. And a lot of people are in it already. So that story I very quickly dismissed and couldn't really buy it. Um, now let's talk about grief. That's a natural phenomena that when we lose someone we love, naturally we're going to be missing him. M my experience of losing three people that were very close to me and I dearly love them and do love them, my experience was that they moved into my heart. I feel them now more than I feel them, felt them ever before. Something shifted. Before, I would think about him every once in a while. And of course, there was a strong love between us. After their death, I can feel him very strongly in my heart. Very strongly, more than ever. And that feeling has not changed. I mean, my best friend passed away in 2012 or 13, and to this day, I feel his presence. Uh, I lost my sister in 2003. I feel her presence very strongly, and I lost my father in 2015. All of them, I feel them very strongly in my heart. 
So, if death was the end of the story, then, I mean, I'm just being practical with it. And uh, so, if it was the end of the story, why am I feeling them so strongly? Why there is this presence of them? That sometimes I can feel them in my cottage, where if I'm traveling, if I am um, in the desert, if I'm by myself somewhere, I feel the presence. Sometimes I hear their voices as if they talk to me. And I don't feel like I'm delusional. I just can hear them talking to me or telling me to do something or not to do something or giving me a message. Or I can feel like something's hovering around me and it's touching me or caressing me. But as far as uh, grieving goes, that's a natural, very natural thing because you no longer have this person physically next to you and of course even though that you feel them very strongly in your heart nothing's in comparison in having them physically near you so you can touch them and hug them and kiss them and hold them in your arms of course I prefer that we all do that but we have to shift our consciousness. We have to elevate um, and change the way we look at things. If we want to be free and view death differently, not as a bad thing, but as a transition that takes place. And it's natural because the entire nature follows this, this law. And what makes me think that it's a bad thing? And what makes me think it's a bad thing is my conditioning, is the way I was brought up. If we were in a society or we grew up in a culture that embrace death and would celebrate it so if somebody you love they would pass and we would be celebrating their passing as a transition to a different dimension or the whatever you want to name it we, we can call it anything we want but what's the difference between if I feel that there is a sense of I am, I know I am, there's a presence, which I cannot imagine that if my body dies, this I am, anything is going to happen to it. As far as I know, it's eternal. the consciousness, the awareness of the presence of this person, where would it go? How would it end? Which to me is impossible, but the body naturally is going to terminate. So you can have a belief system that when you die, it's over, it's finished, or whatever. This fear that we have of this place that we're going to be going because it's unknown. And generally, there's this major fear of this unknown. But you don't know. It may be 100 times better than this life you're living. Why would you believe that it's a really a bad thing? Why not? Isn't that a belief system? How do you know it's a bad thing? Who do you know died and came back? Maybe if it's really a bad thing, some people would come back and would say, you know what? I don't dig it. I'm, I'm coming back.
So no one has come back from it to give us any reports. So what makes us think that it's a horrible thing? It's this dark, nasty, cold, alone place. What makes you think that way? And, and to my belief, it's because of our conditioning. It's our culture. It's the society. The way they deal with it. Now imagine that you grew up in a culture that was really embracing death as a transition, as a transformation to a better life and when someone was passing whether it was voluntarily or they were just passing it happened it's an accident or whatever is whatever happened and we were celebrating this there was a big celebration everybody would come together there was food there were drinks there was music we were all wearing white or colors and celebrating it. And it wasn't anything bad. And the idea was, okay, you're going to the other side, you're going to be getting together with your parents, you're going to be getting together with your cousins, with your uncles, aunts, friends, everyone who tra left before you. And we're celebrating that. That is a reunion with our family and friends. So it was something like in a way you were looking forward to as you're coming closer to the end of the line or this life. So it would have been a complete different story. As far as uh, grieving goes, I feel like it shouldn't be repressed we should allow it to be the my experience was I, I didn't force myself to not be sad or be sad I didn't force myself to cry or not cry I just allowed myself to be very natural with this and the sadness would come uh, sometimes in the beginning after you lose somebody you don't really feel I mean you're sad but you're not really feeling it for me it was uh, the last time after I lost my dad I um, the first week I mean the first couple of days it was very sad and then when I uh, came to the US uh, I wasn't feeling so much but then, like a couple of weeks after, it was coming out very strongly and there were moments that I would just burst into tears and crying and then there were moments like I was laughing. But I allowed it to happen. And it's my suggestion to anybody who experience this is to be very natural about it and to allow yourself to feel just feel everything you need to feel but I and also in there, there are moments that you may go to this regret like you didn't spend enough time with the person or you may be blaming yourself but I didn't do any of that because I knew I exactly spent whatever time I had to spend with them. There was nothing else I could do. Uh, it was perfectly designed to be that way. Of course, 
a part of you, the mind will come and say, well, I wish I had more time with them or I wish I spent more, I, I uh, gave them more attention or whatever. That is a natural part. I mean, the mind is going to play that game with you anyway. It doesn't matter what. I mean, you could be spending every day with that person and be very attentive to a person who's close to you and it's dying, and still, after they die, your mind will come and tell you, well, you didn't do enough. You should have done more. That's the nature of the mind. And you want to be treating the mind the same way you're treating it in your meditation and the same way in your you're training. You're simply being an observer of it and you watch it because it's going to come and play tricks on you, wants to blame you. You should have done this, you should have done that, you should have been more attentive, um, you didn't do enough, you didn't say what you had to say. All of these things will come. But my suggestion is allow it to come. Simply be aware of it. Watch it. And n not go anywhere with it. And when sadness comes, embrace sadness and be sad. Because that's a beautiful emotion. To be sad. To feel sadness. It's natural. Be sad. There's nothing wrong with it. Feel it. When it comes, that sadness comes, it's so strong that there's nothing you can do about it. It takes over. And just dive into it and just be present with it. And do the same thing. Sadness is here. Sadness is visiting. And feel the sadness. Completely. And then the sadness will go away, just like anything else. And then it may come back again. I remember like a month after my dad passed, I'm driving towards Sedona, and all of a sudden, the sadness, strong sadness took over. And I just burst into crying. And it was beautiful. Cried for five minutes or ten minutes. Uh, to a point that I had to pull over. And then it goes away and then you just continue driving. And of course, like anything else, the feeling is going to come and go. But if you're trained... If you have done the work and you simply remain the observer of your emotions and you're observing your mind, then you don't go into these self-sabotage and self-blame places, blaming yourself. Because that's a trick the mind will play on you. Blaming yourself, feeling guilty. You feel the emotion when it's happening, but you don't go into a story with it. Because that story comes, you feel the emotion, you feel really sad, you feel the grief. But then what happens is after that, the mind will come and start a story that you weren't good enough, you didn't pay attention to this person, to your loved one, you weren't with them, blah, 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 and then you start blaming yourself. Or going to this story of poor me, and I lost my child, or I lost my husband, or wife, or mother, and poor me story. Pay attention to me. I'm unfortunate. That's another game the mind is going to play. You have to be aware of it. 
So you don't go into this uh, victim place. But we have to reprogram ourselves and retrain ourselves by understanding that life and birth and death is a natural part of this dimension. Everything's got a period from the time it arises to the time that it's going to disappear. It's got a time period. Nothing's going to last forever. Nothing. Even the planet Earth always is changing. Even the most amazing power, uh, solid mountains, they're changing. Everything's going to change. Anybody has any questions or any comments? Hi, Dorothy. Yes, I want to share something with you all. Okay. Um, in 2012, my father died, and um, I made a very important experience for me. And at this time, I was already trained in being in the flow with feelings, just to feel a yeah. feeling very pure. And I experienced a, a period of time, I think about two months, I was really, really sad, not always, but often. But it was no suffering and no pain. It was pure sadness. And I can say, in a way, I, I could enjoy it. it. It has a certain beauty and without suffering. And that was very very good for me to experience in, in that way. It was so intensive. Yeah. Beautiful. It's, yeah, it's just, uh, you, you know, you kind of become even more beautiful because you're in this deep sadness and you're very vulnerable and your guards are down and there's a purity in it that I've experienced, yeah. that you're very raw. And uh, it, it makes you even more beautiful than ever before. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi, Katie. Um, Hi. I just want to have a comment or experience. I just recently lost my dad a year ago from cancer, and I was his caregiver. And and then three years ago, like 2007, I lost my mom from cancer, and I and my dad and I were her caregiver. And it was like a double whammy for me, just not like a victim, but just lost, you know, a continue of losing, you know, my loved ones, and yes, um, I pretty much um, on a spiritual journey now, and I feel my dad is here all the time, and uh, he gives me signs, and uh, he comes as hummingbirds, and you know, it's just a real. He's given me which is wild, uh, a spiritual um, rebirth, I guess. Yes. Time. And um, it's uh, very, it, it's wild because my dad was a low key guy and very, but now in a spiritual world, he's like, okay, here, here it is, here I am, and I'm gonna comfort you. I'm gonna help you out, just listen. So it's just listening and feeling, and the divine will come. He will come, 
or my parents will come. That's all. Beautiful. That's that's a good thing you brought up because um, for me, what happened when I lost my sister, uh, it really uh, made us all in the family to be more attentive with each other and more present and pay more attention. Uh, it made me realize like with all the loved ones, family, friends, like how little time you have with each other and not take anything for granted. So it's like my sister goes and then my best friend goes like 10 years after and it kind of like sharpens your senses because uh, you realize how fragile, fragile life is. First of all, you're always on the edge of death. From the time you were born, you're on edge of death because there's no guarantee how long you're going to live. And there's no guarantee how long the people around you are going to be around. So, you know, we get caught up in this, in this um, fast-paced life and with our own agendas and the stuff we're doing and we're going, going, going. And sometimes we're not paying any attention because we get so busy with our own stuff. But when you lose someone close to you and you care for it wakes you up that wait a minute maybe i can stop by and make that phone call or maybe i can just spend a little bit more time or at least when i'm with the people i love be really present and really absorb them and drink them and uh because this could be the last time we're going to be together and kind of bringing that awareness because that's what it does it wakes you up from this sleepy dreamy place to the reality that this moment is the only moment you have and don't take anything for granted that oh she's gonna she's always gonna be there or he's always gonna be there and that's not how it is also made me realize that the time you're born is set and the time you die is set. It's already written. There's n nothing you can do to extend your life. Nothing. I mean, you can do all these jumping jacks. It won't make any difference. It's already written. It's already set. So, then you can just live your life bravely and live it fully and do everything you want to do and express yourself in this life in whatever way that works for you. And, and try to do all the stuff you really love to do and, and love anybody you want to love. Tell them whatever you want to tell them. Whatever it is. Because somehow we have this deep conditioning that we're hanging on. We want to hang on to things all the time. But so there's this thing. You can see it with people. Accumulating, let's say, more wealth. Like the concentration is in accumulation of objects. Let me have more, more, more. And there's nothing wrong with being wealthy or accumulating more wealth, but losing sight from life that everything is temporarily, everything has a life shift, shelf life and it's only going to be for a period of time and it all can disappear at any moment all of it can be gone like this and it's interesting that how many times you have to see this happen 
How many times this has to happen to you? How many times you have to see that people die or people around you die or you lose things? That you got all these things but you cannot hang on to them and they come and go. I mean, how many times life has to show you this? That everything is always changing. I mean, look at our world. Prior to February 15th or, I mean, Je March 15th or March 1st, we had a different world. And then what happened to our world? That world that we knew is gone. I mean, isn't that a good example? What else do we need? I mean, how many people around you died? What is it we have to go through to get it? And yet, we don't get it or we don't want to look at it. Somehow you brush it under the rug as if it doesn't happen. It's not going to happen to you. It's right in front of us and it's happening all the time. It's so clear. And it's not a bad thing. Death is not a bad thing. It's a transition. Because the I am remains the I am. It's interesting because when uh, it always it points out to the power of love that uh, Katie you mentioned that you lost your father but you feel your father very strongly in your heart and you feel the love and the love is not gone the love actually is stronger than before so and even the bonding maybe got stronger yeah it's like love here I'm gonna unmute you Okay, I unmuted you. Absolutely. Um, my bond with my dad, my dad and I were close anyway because I was with them and taking care of them, you know, all the way to hospice. But, you know, every day, you know, taking care of my dad 24-7. And then when he passed, and this is a wild thing too, when he passed, he passed in our um, house, at my family's house. Um, and my brother was there my younger brother was there and i told him you better get over here you know he's gonna pass and we both saw um our outside light just totally it was like a sun it just kind of it was that night and it just kind of expanded and i'm going oh my god you know they're coming uh you know the family the angels or the divine is coming to help my dad and transition and my, and my brother saw, did you see that? And I go, yeah, I saw that. And my dad passed, you know, peacefully. And after that, my dad has been always here with me. Um, he's, I mean, I feel him all the time. Um, we had a, a riot here um, with those riots, you know, that was going on. Mm -hmm. It was down the street. And uh, I heard my dad just go, be calm and just lock everything down. You're okay. And I was, wow. calm. you know, I mean, it, it's that type of divine, you know, coming in. And I, I guess I'm trying to say, just hear it. Just try to hear your, your relatives or a person that you deeply love. Um, and they will help you. Just call on, on them. You know, going, hey, I, I need help, and they will come. He will, he's always here for me. Absolutely. You Beautiful. I mean? so yeah. It's just, you know, and it's even, but like you say, it's even more intense now than I, you know, he's here, you know, when I'm sleeping, when I'm up, and with my plants. <laughs> They're all gardeners, and my dad's out there, you know, helping me, going, you know, pointing things out. <laughs> Guiding you is yeah, kind of taking the role of your 
your higher self, your guide. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very, you know, I have not afraid of death or, you know, anything of that sort. You know, I'm like you, kind of looking forward, like, oh, this is going to be an adventure, you know. So. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> so good. So good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. Hi, Breda. Hi. Hello. Uh, if I turn up the volume. Um, you may not want to go there because it's not directly on our topic of today. I have no, but it is a continuum of the same. I have no problem with anything you said today. I'm absolutely uh, in unity with you and have experienced that many, many times with relatives, friends, and with my own advanced years as well. <clears throat> and I have no fear of death. The, the question that's sort of buzzing around in my mind, which you may choose to answer or not, is um, how much of this life is based on previous lives, or do we have some free freedom to choose our kind of contracts or what we're working out in this life? Or when we transition, which you have described so beautifully, um, are our relatives uh, that we've known in this life, do they continue in ways, in other lives, or et cetera, et cetera? Have you anything to say about that? It's just it's, right. it's of great interest to me because certainly we connect with them. They are dead, but they're living within us and they're living in our spirits and our consciousness. We zip over or zip to a different dimension and then when we zip off to back to Earth again, how, how does it work out? Would you care to comment, please? Right. Yeah, sure. That's a great one. Thank you for asking this. I, as far as I know, which I know very little, um, is when, before we're born, Ishvara, great Lord God, is writing a script for us and so it's like these are the lessons you need to learn so it's like they write this script for you this is your life you're gonna go there and these are the players that are gonna come with you your mom your dad you're gonna be landing in this family this is gonna be your dad that's gonna be your mom whether they're abusive or they're loving or whatever is the scenario we land in this particular situation because there are certain life lessons we have to learn. It's already written and there is no choice in it. So you just go, let's say, you know, somebody, let's, you know, let's say they lost their child. She was 30 years old. She died at age 30 or died at age 13 or 14. And of course, for a parent, it's very, very difficult to lose their child. But that period of time that this person came in, they had a specific mission to live that life for 13 years or 40 years and learn whatever they had to learn and experience whatever they had to experience, as well as teaching whatever they had to talk to the people around them. It's all, all, all of it is already set. As far as whether after we die and we go to the other side and joining our family, those parts I don't exactly know, to be honest with you. So, um, I don't know what to say because I don't know I haven't gone to the other side and be there for six months or a year and uh, come back and I've been on the edge of it but Karen just one moment I'll get to you I've been on the edge of it but I haven't gone all the way and come back 
So I don't really know if because uh, what if you go to the other side and your dad's already reincarnated and is back on Earth or some other plane? Um, however, it's hard for me to even imagine that after you you die, it's the end of it because. It is a cycle and and it keeps going it's it's eternal so this life is not the end of my life my being that part I know but uh, what happens after I don't really know I hope I answered your question here I'm gonna unmute you for a moment so. Um, yes, you you did. I have just one one um, qualification there. When you say it's already set, this life is already set. Do do we do I have any say in the setting, or are you say some greater spirit is sets it to me according to my karmic path? Right. Yeah. The um, there there is no free will because. To have free will means you have to be an independent entity separated from the whole thing, from the whole. But there's no such a thing separated from the whole. I am a part of existence. So this notion of being, having a free will, it's it's just a sense of that I am someone independent, I'm almighty, I choose my own life, I choose which direction to go, what to do, but that doesn't exist because the entire existence is deciding what to do through this unit. And it is in a way is a paradox because you may say, okay, if everything's already said, then why would you be reincarnating or coming back to this life or have to go through life lessons and then die and come back is if it's uh, all God if it's all so but there's parts of it is really unexplainable because the reason it's unexplainable because we're trying to understand something with the human mind we're trying to separate things in black and white. It's either I have free will or I don't have free will. But it's not like that. It's like when awakening happens, when you reach a higher level of consciousness, you start realizing that things are not black and white. There's something in between. It is and it's not. So in a way, you don't have free will, but it appears that you do have free will. And you incarnate and live this life to learn lessons, to experience, and you also realize that it's the self, it's that one being that wants to experience different aspects and different lives through all these different units. Let's say right now there's seven billion people. I don't know if it's six, seven, eight or whatever it is, uh, which doesn't matter to me because I don't experience it. I can't experience seven billion people. I only experience a few people who I see around me. So I can't feel more than that. So but there is a phenomena happening. There is, it, it looks like there's these transactions happening. And there is something to gain, something to learn and experience. It, it, that's all I, I can perceive in this life. It's very limited. Because I can't see anything beyond that. You know, I can't see the whole big picture. 
because it's not that information is not available what's available to me is very limited so based on very limited information we're, we are going forward and we're operating on very little vision very little that we see because you can look back and see all of your lives in details you can't go back to the past you can't go to the future it's very one-dimensional so but what I've realized I can only speak of my personal direct personal experience is my experience and my realization is free will does not exist because there is no independent entity separated from the source there is no one person separated from the whole everything is a part of the whole so that one person if it's a part of the whole then cannot have its own independent free will its will is the will of the totality even though it appears to be separated it feels like separated there's a sense of separation it feels that way all of your experiences from your childhood up to this point points out to that however when you are in deep meditation when you go beyond the thinking mind and you go to no mind then you experience the oneness you experience the complete being the the I am excuse me someone's trying to call me it happens a lot of times whether it's in meditation uh, if you are making love when you're giving birth there's many uh, different moments in life that that sense of separation is not there and actually there is no one there so you are doing something but that sense of doing is not there something else is doing through you and those are the moments that you get a glimpse of the absolute because you it's perfect it's divine it's blissful and it's effortless and I'm sure you've experienced it but again as I mentioned this is my personal direct experience somebody else or there's books or there's a lot of teachers books talking about what happens after you die where do you go and da 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 da, -da. I really can't talk about things I don't know thank you you're welcome Hi, Karen. Hello, hello. Hi. I, I just wonder when you say this that you can only talk about out from your direct experience. When you say this, and 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 then you say that uh, that we're handed a script, right? What uh huh. Do you what do you mean that you can only talk out of your direct experience? right exactly right that's okay that's something that was shown to me it was shown to me so the things that i have seen and it was expressed uh and and uh it's something that was shown to me so that i can talk about Uh, it's like when you're in some deep states of samadhi and you travel and you go to different parts of universe 
and you see different life forms or you have different encounters with trans-dimensional beings. So it's something you have experienced or something the divine has shown to you. Are you with me? Yeah. Is your attention with me or you're somewhere else? No, I'm with you. Okay, right. So the way it works is there's like a curtain. They, there's a, it's basically you have a curtain in front of you, okay? And sometimes God takes this curtain down and shows itself to you, and then they pull the curtain back up. So that's where you get a glimpse of the absolute. You basically when they want you to know something or to see something they reveal it to you and I'll give you an, a simple example what's the difference between us which is a small group of sannyasins small group of the monks on the path spiritual seekers and the mainstream world. Why the mainstream world, the mainstream people are not interested in what, what we're doing? And they, may, they probably make fun of you and me because to them what we do is BS. We're the weirdos. We're strange. We're weird people, you know, coming on this spiritual path. Are you there? Yes, yeah, I'm here. Okay, yeah. So have you, have you ever thought about that? Is, you, you know, your, I don't know, I don't know about your life. I mean, your family or friends or whatever, or different people you're, is everybody spiritual in your family, in your clan, in your tribe? No, absolutely not. But I, I have many, 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 many friends that are uh, weird. In right, yeah. right, right. But, but do you agree that majority of people on this planet are not spiritual? They're not on this path? Yes, yes. Okay. So why, why are we on this path and they're not on this path? Why are we drawn so strongly towards God, love, self-realization, and they're, to them it's bullshit? You know, you can't talk about these things with them. So, why is that? It's because the Self, Her Majesty, God, the Spirit, again, whatever name we want to give it, hasn't revealed itself to them. Because God has to want you to get a taste of it, get a taste of love, get a taste of that for you to come on this path. Otherwise, it's impossible. You can sit down and read about it all day long, but you're not touched. And then when the Divine Self wants to, it opens the curtain and shows its face to you. And then you're hooked. Because when you get a taste of God like that, taste of, when I say love, I'm not talking about human love, romantic love. I'm talking about divine love. When you get a taste of it, there's no way back. You can't go back. You can't turn around. You're hooked. It's like God impregnated you.
You're pregnant now. And you want more. Alright, well... Nice to see you all. I appreciate your being and joining me. Uh, our next academy is going to be next Wednesday, same time. Uh, also, uh, those of you who are not aware of, uh, we're, I'm going to have a uh, free online global self-awakening retreat. It's going to be for nine days in a row, two hours a day. And uh, you're welcome to join me. That's going to be starting on October 10th. And uh, we're going to be sending you the invite to it. And uh, if you feel like sharing it with your friends, whether it's on Facebook or uh, forwarding our email to your uh, beloved friends, f feel free to do so. Uh, we appreciate it. We want to spread the word that uh, this... Uh, retreat is available to everybody who's open to it. Also, if anybody would like to make any comments, you're welcome to uh, send me an email. My email is info at zarathustra.tv and uh, my website is zarathustra.tv I look forward to seeing you next week. Send you Lots of love and light. Namaste.